just want to really quickly show you guys how to export stems out of Ableton Live to use in a track. So basically stems are going to be full tracks, they're going to be full renders, but they're going to be individual parts. So you hear me talk a lot on the blog and I've talked about before to kind of give yourself some more freedom. Um, keep things uh, kind of separate as you can, as separate as you possibly can. So it gives you the freedom if your keyboard player isn't there, you just unmute your keys track and you have all that stuff. Um, exporting to stems is great because you get into a live situation and if you need to tweak your mix a little more, bring your pad down, bring your guitar up, you can do that. When I export a full rendered, uh, completely mixed track where it's just an mp3 and it's one track, a stereo track, it's going to be very tricky uh, for me to bring the guitar down because I don't have that ability. But it's incredibly, incredibly simple to do in live. So what I've got here pulled up is a very simple track. It's a track I, I did for a song that we do at church. Um, I'll let you hear just some of it just so you can kind of get a feel for what we have going on here. Okay, so this is a track that actually started as kind of a remix, electro track, and then I've turned it into a full band thing. Even though there's kind of this bass drive thing and uh, a lot of keyboard stuff um, happening, still kind of works really well but for a full band. But because there's so much stuff and because there's so many different layers, I need it as separate as I possibly can. So that's where the stems thing comes in handy. So if you look, um, let's see if we can get over here. Let me create a track just so we can see. Yeah, so I have about 20 tracks of audio and or MIDI in this file, it's a lot of tracks. But what I want to do to get them as individual stems, what most people would do is maybe record uh, into another track or export everything separate track by track, but Live makes it incredibly easy for us to do this. So if we go up to our file menu, we have an option down here at the bottom, export audio video. The other way to get there is to do Command Shift R. Okay, so that's going to allow us to render. So I think uh, when we say export audio and video, I think of render, which reminds me of the R, Command Shift R. Um, I believe if you're on a PC, I think it's Control Shift R. Um, you might have to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I believe that's correct. But it basically gives us these export options. So the one option that you really need to pay attention to here, um, if you're doing full stems, is under the data section where it says render track. Typically, it's going to be set to master. That's going to render... Um, basically what's flowing through our master. So that's going to create a mixed kind of mp3. But if we click this, you see we have an option here to do all tracks. What that's going to do is that's going to render out every single track in, um, in our file, and that's going to create those individual stems. So we have an individual bass part, kick part, snare part, whatever, depending on how many different sounds you have, uh, which is really, really nice. So that's going to be helpful. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, if you're, I've learned this the, the hard way, if um, make sure you set your your bit rate and your sample rate everything correctly. If you're using a external plugin, a VST, which uh, in this case I am for string stuff, using uh, Philharmonic, the Miroslav by IK Multimedia for string sounds, which I really like. Um, if the sample rate, uh, the export sample rate is set different than what the sample rate is in your project that you're working on with that VST, it's going to come out sounding like it's in a different key made the mistake of putting off the rendering process to too close to uh, performance time and when I pull in the track for rehearsal everything sounds really wacky and figured out that's the issue. So try to keep your export of your buffer size kind of the same there. Once you export it then maybe you can you know re-import those tracks, re-export if you need to, to to lower it down or convert over. Anyway so I set all this up I would press OK. Uh, I would render this track out onto my desktop. I typically create a folder for the loop and then this is what we'll end up with. So through the miracle of the internet, I'm going to hop over and create a new live set. Um, so what I would do is I would render all that stuff out, it would go into that folder, I'd have separate tracks, and it would look exactly like this. Okay, So you see Sing Full Band Loop. That is the folder I created when I rendered all this stuff out. Um, you see there are a lot of tracks here. One important thing to note when you render your tracks out like this, um, you're going to have your return tracks included. So if you had any effects uh, loaded up on your return uh, tracks and you've got your sins turned up, all that fun stuff, you're going to have those. Um, anything if you group tracks, so it, you can see here I have, uh, where is it, I have a strings track, but then I also have um, 
my individual string parts, cello one, cello two, all that stuff loaded in. So if I wanted, I could just pull out just the string kind of uh, blend, um, that submix of the strings, or I could keep the individual string parts. Depending on my computer, how fast it is, if I have a hard drive, I may do the mix uh, and just kind of do groups, or I may do everything together. Um, the other thing it creates is a fully rendered version here. Oops, sorry about that. Got to plug in my computer soon. Uh, creates a fully rendered version here, which we may hear. Turn that down a bit. There we go. Um, and so I don't really need that when I drag that in. But we have all these loops, so how do we get them into our live sets? The next thing. I'm going to press tab, and I'm going to load them into arrangement view. Um, same process, arrangement or session. I'll actually show you guys both just so you can see it. So what I'm going to do is take this loop, um, and I'm going to select my first track here, and then I'm going to go down and select my last track. And then if I drag it in, this is what's going to happen. If I just take these tracks and drag them in, uh, it looks like it's just one track loading in, but actually what happens is it loads them all onto one track beside uh, each other. And I really don't want that, so I can delete that audio track. But what I'm going to do is as I go to drag these in, Watch what happens. You can see the individual tracks loaded in there. If I hold Command, all those are going to drop down and go into their own track, and then I let go. So now you see each of those tracks, each of those stems, has their own separate track, right? And they're all loaded in, so that's really nice. Now this is what it looks like in Session View. Uh, let me clean up these tracks. There we go. Uh, if I go to drop them in here, and I want them all in the same scene, if I want them separate scenes like this, uh, you can see I just dropped that into one track and they all load into separate scenes, but I don't want that because they're all the same uh, song, right? So what I can do is drag these in. Let's have them all go to scene two. As soon as I press command, those will all load into scene two um, and they all have their separate tracks. And what I would do from here typically is I would go through and label all these tracks. Uh, the big piece of that is I, I want to over label so that I know what song is what and know what part is what. So I could go through and see, okay, that's a chain part. So that's a side chain section. And I would go through and label each of these. Now probably the next step that I would do if I'm building a set with individual songs, I would select all of these, okay? So I select my first one, uh, hold shift, go to my last one, and then I'm gonna group them. So the easy way for me, I could right click and select group tracks, but it's really fast to do command G. That groups them, the name of the song is Sing. So I do that, and when I press minus there, it completely cleans that up, and that track disappears, which is beautiful. So what happens now is if I need more volume or less volume for sing in my set, I'll turn that up or down. But then if I need to go into sing and adjust the volume of track eight, I can individually pull that one down or bring this one up, um, kind of set all those levels, and then I can adjust the master level here, which is then going to feed, go to my master level here. Um, and everything works wonderfully. So, a little longer video than I intended, but shows you how to get stems from Ableton Live to load back into your project, which is going to give you more flexibility in a live setting, going to allow you to better mix your loop and make it more suited for your band and for your mixing environment. So again, as always, if you guys have